I'd like to speak to Julie Devlin, Frank Scanlon. Frank, why are you calling me? Well, I heard about your engagement to Ramsey, and I wanted to be the first to offer my congratulations. I, I just have one question. What are you giving him in exchange for this bogus wedding? I hate to burst your twisted bubble, Frank, but Chris and I are in love, and that's why we're getting married. In your own way, you might be in love, but I know Ramsey. He's a double-crosser and a thief. What takes one to know one, I suppose? If that's your subtle way of accusing me of stealing your money, I already told you I didn't do it. Oh, you stole it. The problem is you just weren't clever enough to keep it. I didn't lose it because I never had it, but I have a pretty good idea who does. Ask your intended. Oh, and, and Julie, I know you are pretty handy with a knife, but if I were you, I'd be careful who you get in bed with, literally and figuratively speaking. Dr. Ramsey, please. Well, do you know when he will be available? Have him call his fiance as soon as possible. It's urgent. Hey, Karen. Neil, just in time for your chemo. Drive yourself today? <laughs> Nah, parents only let me drive on the weekends. Parents? So where are they? Well, they're just being slow pokes, but, you know, it's okay. I'm not in a real rush to do this. It's not much fun, is it? Which is why I thought a videotape might help pass the time. I set it up for you in oncology. What tape? Gotta wait and see. Oh, come on, just a little, little hint. Mm -hmm. hey. hey, what's going on? Karen got me a tape to watch in treatment. Oh, that was nice. When did you have the time? You've been so busy lately with Lee and everything. I always have time for my best guy. <laughs> Joe told me about your grandfather. Is he feeling better? Well, he's not out of the woods yet, but it looks good. I'll keep a good thought for him. Shouldn't we be getting Neil to his appointment? Yeah, come on, buddy, let's go. <sighs> Bye. Bye. Do I get a phone call? When telephono? Nah. What a country. You an American? Yeah. Los Angeles. How about you? Port Charles. I'm Fred. Kevin. Pleased to meet you. Eve, Wilma. Name's Wilma. Hi. Um, what you doing in here? Oh, yeah, well, uh, my uh, boyfriend and I had a little misunderstanding with uh, a bunch of stiffs. What about you? Wife and I were out sightseeing. We accidentally jostled some guy in a suit. His camera fell and broke. And that's grounds for imprisonment? Well, you wouldn't think so, but this guy must have had some pull with the local police. It was weird. They kept referring to him as... The Cobra? The Cobra? Wow, that is weird. Yeah. You ever hear anyone call that before? No, I've never heard of anyone referred to as the Cobra. Do you want me to eat around here? No, I don't. You seem kind of down. Jail tends to have that effect on me. Yeah, but from what you said, your arrest was a misunderstanding. 
It'll be cleared up in no time. I have other things on my mind. My father just passed away. So when we came to Rome looking for Victor, we had no idea that we would find him in the morgue. Oh, it must have been quite a shock. It was. Sounds like a pretty independent kind of guy traveling through Italy by himself at his age. Victor's middle name was independent. He was quirky and unpredictable and frustrating at times, but I never met anyone who had as much love of life as he did. You're lucky you and your dad got along. I've barely spoken to mine in the last five years. We weren't always close. So it's only in the last couple years Kevin and his father developed such a tight bond? Right. And you know, Victor even asked Kevin to be the best man at his wedding. <sighs> and now he's gone. How did he die? The police claim it was natural causes. But you don't believe them. We're not even sure why Victor was here. Victor didn't say anything. Why all the questions? So what's with the third degree? <laughs> no offense, just passing time. We're in jail. What else is there to do? Kevin Collins. Yes. You must have a friend or somewhere. The charges have been dropped. You can go. Hey, put in a good word to your connections for me, will you? Neil getting his treatment? Yeah, Courtney's with him. Sometimes I think it's better if we don't hover over him all the time. Oh, easier for Neil, maybe, but not for you. I wish I could do the chemo for him. I know how hard this is. It helps having you on Neil's case. Well, that's my job. And a lot more. So, how's Mary doing? Oh, she's still holding out. I'm hoping that Victor will come to his senses and come home. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Victor seemed so in love with her. Sometimes we... don't know people as well as we think we do. I guess. Oh, Lee's improving. So he must be relieved. Huh? Well, I don't think I'll get a full night's sleep until he's completely recovered. You know, I, it's funny, I see sick and dying people every day, but seeing Lee in ICU with all the tubes and tapes you and monitors... You realize how easy it is to lose what we value most. Mm -hmm. Too easy. But I'm determined not to let that happen. Me too. I mean, with Neil, you know. Which reminds me, I, I never got a chance to thank you for taking him to see 98 Degrees. He had a great time. Well, I had a great time, too. It was nice seeing him forget about being sick for a while. I didn't want the night to end. So why didn't you come inside when you brought him home? Um, I had an early call at the hospital. Well, it must be Neil. Actually, it's mine. I've got a patient. Um, if I don't get up to oncology, say goodbye to Neil for me. Tell him I have his next video all put down. Three Stooges? How'd you know? Just did. Well, don't tell Neil. I won't surprise him. Your secret is safe. You called? I had an unsettling conversation with Frank earlier. What did he want? Who knows? But I'm more convinced than ever that he's the one who stole my money. Well, I told you. But I'm also sure that someone stole it from him. Well, it would serve him right. Frank thinks you have the money. Me? How about a consolation prize for me? Some encouragement to come up with a decent lie when Frank asks me where the money went? Well, you can just say that Julie took it. You want me to make it believable. I need some motivation from you. Oh, unless, of course, you don't mind Frank banging on your door in the middle of the night. Well, I guess... I guess a little uh, peace and quiet is worth paying for. What a guy. The Lord giveth, and he taketh away. 
You know, I bet Frank still has the money. He's just saying that to throw you off. I mean, why would I risk my share of the DL-56 profits? Because it might be a while before we get our hands on the patent money. Meanwhile, your bills continue to pile up, not to mention that lien on your condo. I didn't take your money. I know you're my fiancé, and I should believe you, but I don't. Julie, the only plotting I've done is with my bride-to-be, and that's just to get her a new guardian and a new trial. That reminds me, did Darren speak to you about going to see Greg Cooper? Yeah, he did, and I think it's pointless. No, it's not. If we convince Cooper to change his story, get him to say that he brainwashed me into thinking I committed the murders, the jury will have to find me innocent. Well, why would Cooper want to help you? He was ruled sane, which means he's going to trial. Darren thinks he can get Cooper declared mentally incompetent with my help. So you're banking on Cooper helping you in exchange for his transfer from prison to a mental hospital? Call me crazy. But I have a hunch if old Greggy had to choose between padded walls and iron bars, he'd go for the more comfy cell. Well, you got a point. You know what? Oh, I gotta go. Your old flame's heading this way. Hey, Frank. What are you doing here? Dropping off some burgers? I'm curious, Ramsey. What is your price for becoming Julie's groom? You think I'm being paid to marry Julie? It's the only explanation that makes sense. Besides, I know you're the one who stole her money. <laughs> what money? The inheritance from her father. Hmm. That's a pretty serious accusation you're making, Frank. I mean, a person could go to prison for stealing money like that. Hmm. Yes, they could. And you're not going to get away with it. Look, I understand you're being jealous. After all, you've lost an amazing, beautiful woman. So that's why you're spinning tails like this. But if you had any proof to back up these charges, you would have already notified the authorities. So if you'll excuse me, I have patience to heal, and you no doubt have dishes to wash. I'm going to make you pay, Ramsey. You count on it. Usually it's the bride's parents who pay. But, uh... Julie and I have decided to split the cost. The nurse told me you already called Neil's prescription into the pharmacy. I figured he'd want to go right home after his treatment. That was very thoughtful of you. Look, whatever differences we may have, I gotta say, you're a good doctor. Well, I only want what's best for Neil. Good. Then you would agree that what he needs right now is a stable home environment. Of course. That means both his parents with him. Having you try to move in on Joe will only upset Neil. <laughs> what goes on between Joe and me is none of your business. My family is my only business. Neil barely got to see his father when Joe was with you last time. Taking Joe away now could really hurt Neil. The last thing I'd ever do is separate Joe and Neil. It's not just Joe and Neil. It's Joe, Neil, and me. Oh, well, you didn't waste any time moving right into that picture, did you? Joe is with me. Because it's what he wants. And what Neil needs. He was the most annoying man. He would not shut up. Uh, sounds just like my cellmate. As soon as he found out Victor was dead, he had a million questions. And the more answers he heard, the more questions he had. That's weird. You know, my cellmate was asking me a bunch of questions about Victor, too. Did she ask about someone called the Cobra? Yes. Yes! Well, I guess Fred and... Fred, Fred and, and Wilma, Wilma didn't just uh, happen to be in jail no, with us. No, they were put there to gather information. Nothing is as it seems. There's oh. questions inside of mysteries, inside of enigmas. I don't like any of them. What the hell are you doing here? Well, I'm the one that got you out of jail. Really? Why? Well, we don't have much time. 
I booked a flight from here to Port Charles for the both of you. Your flight leaves in about an hour. We're not going anywhere. That's right. There's nothing more that you can do here. What do you really know about my father's death? The same thing that you know. He died of a massive stroke. I don't think so. When we were in jail, we each had a young American planted in our cells with us. Why is that? Well, how would I know? I'm not in control of the Italian jail. All right, fine. Answer me this. I never gave you a key to this room, and it was locked. How did you get in here? Everything I have done has been for your protection. You two are in serious danger. Sure we are. Maybe from you. For all I know, you're responsible for my father's death. I don't believe a word you say. And the last thing we're about to do is go back to Port Charles. Not until we know exactly what happened to Victor. If you can't help us, then leave. You don't know what you're doing. Yes, I do. I'm throwing you out. It's the hottest week of the summer. I love you, Lindsay. I'm starting to remember the accident. Lindsay's disappeared. We've got an emergency on our hands. She is going to pay for what she has done. We are running out of time here. Go ahead, jump. Make my day. Things are getting hotter on One Life to Live, your great summer escape. Hey, how's Neil doing? It's pretty good so far. But the uh, chemo doesn't usually make him sick until a few hours later. I was tough enough the first time when he was a patient. I won't do this with my son. Even before we knew he was yours, neither of us was ever able to summon that 100% professional detachment that doctors are supposed to have. That well, was 10 times harder now. Especially when he's throwing up in the middle of the night and I'm the one that's put him on medication that's making him sick. Joe, you're pursuing the best medical regimen to get him back to health. Neil knows that. You have time to discuss Neil's case with me? I wanted to go over the files from last time, now. See if we can figure out why he's responding differently to the treatment. Sure. We could do that over here. Actually, I thought we could grab a cup of coffee. You know, someplace outside the hospital. Uh, maybe we should just stick to the professional stuff. Well, I thought you wanted a little more than that. I did. So what's changed? The other night, when I dropped Neil off, the reason I didn't come in is because I saw you kissing Courtney. I didn't kiss her. Joe, it's been a while, but I remember what a kiss looks like. I don't know what you saw, but you couldn't have been watching for more than two seconds. If you had, you would have seen that I pulled away. You pulled away? Yes. So you didn't kiss her? No. Oh. So? How about going out for a cup of coffee? I'd love to. got what he deserved. What about Eve and the good professor's son? Well, are they still in Italy? I want an update tomorrow. You know, what bothers me is that guy in the morgue with Victor's toe tag on him. You mean the man we saw on the plane coming over? Right. Do you remember he said that he, I looked familiar and we may have met at a medical convention or something? Yes, you believed him. The more I think about it, 
the more I know that I have never seen that guy before in my whole life. Which means he was lying like everyone else. Right. Change of the linen. Oh, see. Kevin, have you seen my other earring? No. Did you try the bathroom? Uh, no. I think I will, though. Oh, Abe, look at that. I found it. Oh, good. Yeah, look out! Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. We can take her. We can take her. You... Maybe not. Hold her, hold her! Boy, when you said you were going to... Take me on a romantic adventure to Rome. I had no idea you had this in mind. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have asked for that second chocolate on your pillow. Well, listen, I know that one thing that Mr. Zorin said is right. We're definitely in danger here. 